do you think the scaling laws are holding strong on uh, there's a lot of ways to describe the scaling laws for AI, but on the pre-training on the post-training fronts, so the flip side of that, do you anticipate AI progress will hit a wall? Is there a wall? You know, it's a cherished micro kitchen conversation. Once in a while, I <laughs> yes. have it, uh, you know, like when Demis is visiting or, you know, Demis, Korai, Jeff, Noam, Sergey, a bunch of our people, like yeah. you know, we sit and, uh, you know, sh uh, uh, you know, talk about this, right? And um, look, I we see a lot of headroom ahead, right? I think uh, we've been able to optimize and improve on all fronts, right? Uh, Pre-training, post-training, test time compute, tool use, right, over time, making these more agentic. So getting these models to be more general world models in that direction, like VO3, uh, you know, the physics understanding is dramatically better than what VO1 or something like that was. So you kind of see on all those dimensions, I, I feel, you know, progress is very obvious to see. And I feel like there is significant headroom. More importantly, you know, I'm fortunate to work with some of the best researchers on the planet, right? They think uh, there is more headroom to be had here. Uh, and so I think we have an exciting trajectory ahead. It's tougher to say, you know, each year I sit and say, okay, we are going to throw 10x more compute over the course of next year at it, and like, will we see progress? Sitting here today, I feel like the year ahead will have a lot of progress. And do you feel any limitations like uh, that, or the bottlenecks, compute limited, uh, data limited, idea limited? Do you feel any of those limitations, or is it full steam ahead on all fronts? I think it's compute limited in this sense, right? Like, you know, we can all, part of the reason you've seen us do flash, nano flash, and pro models, but not an ultra model. It's like for each generation, we feel like we've been able to get the pro model at like, I don't know, 80, 90% of ultra's capability, but ultra would be a, a lot more uh, like slow and a lot more expensive to serve. But what we've been able to do is to go to the next generation and make the next generation's pro as good as the previous generation's ultra, yeah. but be able to serve it in a way that it's fast and you can use it and so on. So I do think scaling laws are working, but it's tough to get at any given time. The models we all use the most is maybe like a few months behind the maximum capability we can deliver, right? Because that won't be the fastest, easiest to use, et cetera. Also, that's in terms of intelligence. It becomes harder and harder to measure uh, performance in quotes, because you know you could argue Gemini Flash is much more impactful than Pro, just because of the latency. It's super intelligent already. I mean, sometimes like latency is uh, maybe more important than intelligence, <laughs> especially when the intelligence is just a little bit less in Flash. Not it's still an incredibly smart model. Yeah, and so you you have to now start measuring impact, and then it feels like benchmarks are less and less capable of capturing the intelligence of models, the effectiveness of models, the usefulness, the real world usefulness of models. 